Who needs a graphics card, eh? Not you. Or at least not in the opinion of Epic Games, makers of the premier free-to-play battle royale Fortnite. Thanks to their recent addition of a super low graphics mode, it's now possible to enjoy all of their map on even crappy integrated graphics, freeing up your hard-earned GPU money to spend on V-Bucks instead. It's almost a year since I last tested Fortnite out on HD 630 graphics, and a lot has changed since then. For a start, Epic have added the Performance Mode option to the game's settings, allowing for some officially sanctioned low-spec gaming. Whereas in my previous testing, my laptop's iGPU could only manage 38 FPS averages at 66% of 1080 when tested in regular old DirectX 12, my experiences with performance modes so far leave me with some hope for a 60 FPS experience in 2021. First, a quick intro to the system. I'm testing on my Dell XPS 9560 with an i7-7700HQ, 32GB of dual-channel DDR4 2400 RAM, and a 1TB NVMe SSD. This is not a particularly optimal spec for iGPU gaming. The laptop has no room for adjusting clock speeds of the CPU or integrated graphics, and although at least the RAM is dual channel, it's still only operating at 2400 speed. In order to make this test as universally relevant as possible, I've ran my benchmarks in several configurations. First with the CPU using all of its 8 available threads, then with hyperthreading disabled in order to simulate a 7th gen quad core i5. Finally, I disabled two of the CPU cores and turned hyperthreading back on in order to simulate a 7th gen i3. A particular quirk of my laptop means it now doesn't seem to boost above its base speed of 2.8 GHz, so your mileage may vary slightly from mine, but as we're about to see, it looks like the game is going to be GPU limited in this instance. Playing at 1920x1080 with render distance maxed out, Fortnite Performance Mode gives a pretty healthy frame rate average of over 50 FPS, regardless of how many CPU threads are available. 1% lows are mostly tolerable, but disappointing. The i7 got a markedly lower 1% score than the simulated i5 and i3, though I wouldn't read too much into that. Fortnite is generally known for its unpredictable frame pacing, and I think using a pretty weak iGPU is just exaggerating that fact. I think the 1600x900 scores are going to earn my recommendation for this test. Averages climb to the 60s, again varying very little across i3, i5 and i7 configurations, and 1% lows are pretty serviceable. Like the previous tests at 1080, the 0.1% scores reflect some pretty abysmal frame pacing, though as pointed out before, your own experience may differ depending on your RAM speed, your CPU's ability to boost, and whether your server's in a good mood or not. Twelve eighty by seven twenty sees a notable improvement in averages into the high seventies and low eighties, but not to one percent or zero point one percent lows. Some might argue in favour of the higher averages compared to sixteen hundred by nine hundred and nineteen twenty by ten eighty, but in my experience, battle royale games usually devolve into long distance sniping, and trying to squint at the screen and figure out which pixels are enemies is already hard enough. I hope you found that useful. I have a few more game-specific videos planned for the HD 630 in the coming weeks, plus I have my more general videos on dedicated graphics cards. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.